All right, got my live stream set up here. Gonna get the link copied out to a couple places and then I'll get going. Gonna be installing the uh, Halo on my Railcore 2 today. Just post it in Facebook here real quick. Posted. And I'll put it up on Twitter real quick. All right, hey, Nate. Okay, so apparently the live stream's working. Can you see the uh, the rail core okay? Hey, I cleaned up. It's, uh, it's a lot better than it was. Um, okay, so first of all, some review of the history of this. I thought of it way back in February and Matt said I was insane, um, but I decided I wanted to do it anyway. So I talked him into milling it for me. So first I did a prototype out of HDPE. Definitely way too flexy, but my prototype fit very nicely. So I verified it was gonna work and all was good. So I exported the model out of Fusion, sent it off to Matt, he imported it into SolidWorks. And this is the one I got back. And Fusion exported it in an odd fashion, and it shrunk by about 6%. So it did not fit, which was disappointing. So I have a nice piece of, of wall art here. Um, got back with Matt. He got our more material. And now, thing, I have a halo. And it looks like it fits very nicely. So this shouldn't take too long to install. So I thought I'd live stream it. Start by filament off. Try and keep an eye on the chat as I can. And yes, I just cleaned this room up and installed two new big shelving units. So I have room for uh, second rail core and, and an E3D tool changer, hopefully soon. Um, so, try and keep an eye on the chat and answer any questions. I don't care if they're Halo related or not um, about the rail core. Because most of this won't be terribly exciting. Theoretically, it should install pretty easily. Uh, the biggest change will be the bolt sizes will be longer, obviously. Um, some things I know are not gonna fit right now, like the X end stop, uh, but I can just manually zero out X and, and print a new one, so I didn't worry about it. Um, it's hard to say what other surprises I'm in for. Pulling this stepper off first. Uh, no, this is my normal beard here. I'll get in the view for a second there. It's, I used to have a big Amish beard. I cut that off. All right, stepper one removed.
So part of what I've been waiting for on this is um, the stepper and idler plates off of this one will be going onto my second rail core. So I now have all the parts to build a second one, assuming the halo works. Hopefully the chat scrolls automatically. Sometimes YouTube's kind of funky with that. One of the changes I'm gonna to have to make here uh, while I do this, I have, I don't know if you can see it or not, probably not in that kind of detail, but uh, my idlers are actually um, just flange bearings. Each one is a pair of flange bearings stacked end to end. Um, they have worked okay. I've had them on for a number of months now. Um, I do see a slight kind of artifact in uh, thin spiral base prints that I think is from them because I did not have it before I put those on. Um, but I can't say for sure when it started. Um, and I haven't taken them off to test. Got my panel due out of the way there. I'm not going to build a ZLT. Um, my second one is another rail core 2 250. And it's because I had so many leftover parts from my first one that uh, I had enough to start a second one. And that will give me two. One that I can leave alone, hopefully, and just print with, which will be the new one. So I'm going to set it up with fairly standard known parts and just print. Get it going at a, a good quality and um, have this one for a dev printer that I can play with. I go an average of about three prints before I change something on my printer, uh, which makes it very hard to just print things on a regular basis because I tend to be just printing test prints all the time. All right, so steppers are off. Get these out of the way. Actually drop these down here. Get the idler plates off. Yeah, I do not have the space for a ZLT either. I don't really have the space for two rail cores, a tool changer, and a delta. So the idler side is, uh, and, and the stepper side too, are the big changes with the halo. Um, hey, Greg. So the halo is what I'm calling a ring, solid ring of aluminum. Here. That will fit around the top of the printer and be integrated stepper and idler mounts and also act as a giant, uh, giant bracket for the entire top. Because uh, right now the top is the only side without a side panel on. Um, so it'll be a, a giant L bracket essentially for the whole top. Yeah, it's a big shiny piece of aluminum. I believe Matt uh, from 713 Maker's initial response was, you want what? So the, the big thing on the Halo is 
uh, with the idler plates the way they are, you can adjust them in XY based on your belts and, and get your belts nicely lined up and um, account for things like, oh, my bearings are, or my idler pulleys are a slightly different size. Um, aluminium, yes. Uh, the rails do not mount to it, though. The rails stay on the, uh, there you go, now I can sit it on top. The rails still stay on the, uh, the extrusion. Uh, this just bolts to the top of the extrusion like that. So it's, it's a big, L bracket essentially, a square bracket for strength. Um, the idler and stepper mounts are integrated in. The trick to it is the alignment in XY is not nearly as adjustable. We still have the adjustment back and forth for, for stepper tension um, when the stepper fits in here. That lines up beautifully. Um, but we do not have the ability to adjust for things like these uh, idler pulleys I'm using that are that are flanged bearings are about a millimeter and a half wider than the, the GT2 pulleys because <coughs> the belt teeth don't sink in and they're they're just a little bit bigger in diameter. So I can't um, I can't adjust for that. So I have to pull those off and use something more stock. I didn't want to model something one off uh, just for me and and not have a true test. So. Part of this is I have to pull these off. Shouldn't take too long here. Pull this one off. Yeah, it should be a lot more rigid mount for both the stepper and the idlers and also provide a nice square base for the belt pads uh, so there's less variation in, in belt height. Um, that'll get a lot better when we get the gates, idlers, and pulleys as well. Um, don't want to lose these. Two little shims there. Pull those off. Grab my giant container of pulleys and idlers. I hate these things. I cannot wait for genuine gates. Uh, rumor is E3D will be selling them. Just waiting on their site upgrades and they should have them in stock. Rumor is, Greg, rumor is. Ask, uh, ask Sanjay how often I bug him about that. See, and right there is why I hate these. I, I wish I could get this in detail on here. Um, I'm, I'm putting this shim on, and that bearing totally sunk inside of this, this cheap idler. Um, and so I'm going to have to just waste a shim uh, to make up for the bearing height, which is why in our documentation, I can't say use exactly five shims um, or one washer and two shims to, to make up the space because every darn idler is a different height. Drives me insane. Okay, I got to think about my belt padding here. So the bottom one comes out, goes around. So I want a smooth idler on the bottom. The top one comes out, goes to the left. So I want a tooth on the top of this front one. Uh, where's my... I'm going to need more shims because these are totally different size than... Uh, Than the others. 
Yeah, belt pathing is fun. Um, I'm looking forward to the tool changer and seeing the differences in the belt pathing uh, between how we did it and, and how it's done on there. That's one of the big curiosity points I have. Um, I've not played with a, a different path design at this point. Steve has done some experimentation with other setups. But man. Just trying to shim this and get it pretty close here. So on our X carriages, we want these as low as possible. So I'm just, again, I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I'm, I'm adding shims to get those as low on the shoulder bolts as I can without uh, doing anything that's going to cause some binding. Yeah, you have one additional pulley to to space out to the side, right, Greg? If I recall, kind of square it up a little bit. And my where my tools are in locked itself on me. That's fun. Well, I guess I can't get in there. Be right back. I need to see if I can find some super lube to hold that. Come on. All right. So I use just a just a small dab of grease here and use it to keep that shim from falling out of position when I invert this to put it on. There we go, no play, spins nice and smooth, tightened all the way down. Yeah, I wondered about that uh, tooth engagement and if, how much that helps. That's one of the things I'm really curious to see. And yeah, for those that don't know, Greg is with E3D, met him at Murph, super nice guy and um, one of the mines behind the tool changer so oh 
Okay, and the back one should be the opposite, so smooth on top. Just going to toss that one right in the trash because it is already super rough moving. Not a great sign. This one's smooth. My shim placement here. It's actually pretty good. One last shim on top of this one, and I'll be able to put this on. Fully tightened down, nice and smooth, no binding. So that's those two. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead and get the halo itself uh, fastened down. So what I'm going to do is just take these. I've got five, six there. I've got about seven there. I'm going to divide them up. Should have enough to do like five, five and three. This one was not built for a halo in mind, obviously. So the uh, number of And three nuts doesn't exactly correspond to what I'd probably put ideally, but good enough. So I'm just getting in place so I can reach in to bolt this on. Okay, so. I think I need 10 millimeter. And I'm going to use some um, 3 millimeter uh, washers that are 9 millimeters in diameter, a little bit wider to give me a little bit better seating on it. like 10 isn't quite enough. Uh, where's my 12s? Doesn't. So a uh, three millimeter by twelve and a uh, uh, wider washer works great on this. All right, Nate. We'll see you later, man. Not sure how long this will take me to install. Hopefully, not too long here.
And now I'm just doing one bolt in each corner. I'll obviously tighten it down a lot more later. I already thought of one thing I'd like to add to this, and that's a, an access hole here so that you in each of the corners. Uh, so we can get to that uh, M3 that's inside of those corner cubes. So before it goes into production, I, I thought of that this morning, that it'd be a handy thing to have. And the way it's modeled, um, it's just passed through slots, so you can mount things just how you do now. Yeah, the big box is a cool printer. And if you do get a chance to come out to Murph, which is right here in Goshen where I live, or um, to any of the shows where E3D goes and Greg is there, uh, strike up a conversation with him. He's, he's super nice. Um, one of the smartest guys at the shows. Always fun to talk to. one more for now and then I'll worry about the rest later. actually centered itself really nicely there uh, as I was bolting it in. Um, I had to loosen these first two up to square it up a little and then it pulled itself in as I put the others in. It didn't let me misalign it, misalign it too much. So for now that should be good. Uh, let's see, probably the same 12s for the steppers then. I do not have a UPS on any of my printers. Probably should. Okay, so that's pretty close. The front pulley sure looks awfully close to the uh, the aluminum for the belt height so we'll te test that in a second here but this is why you know people keep asking us to just sell the halo already and um, I really want to make sure it, it fits mine before uh, somebody else spends the money for one. That's really funny. I got a uh, 
what looks like a, a standard screw with a slotted head in it instead of an M12. Yeah, I used to have UPSs on all my PCs and whatnot back years ago, and then all the batteries died, and I just never got around to buying new ones. So we don't have power outages that often. Yeah, the D-Bot's a good printer um, for the budget. I have no problems with them. Um, but the rail core can do, I think, better, in my opinion. Yeah, that's pretty darn close, but it just clears. So I can't, can't show it, but height-wise, there is maybe going to be a millimeter or so, and I'm going to need to move this one bolt here out a bit because um, the belt will rub on it if I don't. But it does clear the aluminum plate, which is good. So move that out. And we're clear of the plate. Just barely. Wow, that's close. It's okay, though. Close is good enough. Um, and the height might need to be adjusted a little bit because the stepper, oh yeah, it, it probably needs to come up because the stepper is going to sit a little bit lower than I had it before. Um, I had some very early, where did I put them? Uh, these were very early rev motor mounts and so they have quite a pocket um, put into the back of them. I don't know if you can see that on the stream or not. Um, and it's a lot thinner plate than uh, than what he's shipping now. For comparison, here's here's the get it up here closer. Um, you can see the the plate on the new mounts is a couple millimeters thicker than the old one, and the pocket is is not quite as deep. So that's why that's so low. I'll just need to raise that that uh, pulley a little bit. Okay. Get the stepper on. Yeah, um, we're going to keep keep adding to the rail core too. Uh, we have lots of plans for it, including um, getting the E3D tool changer parts working on it. That will happen if, if at all possible. Um, I don't know that they'll work terribly well on the 250 that I have here, um, but I'm going to try. And uh, they should work fine on the 300. I don't see any reason why not. So um, I'm in the beta for that reason. Um, but we have some other things we're working on too. Uh, one of the, the coolest is actually, here I'll, I'll show you, it's on my printer now. So my bed here, uh, looks like a standard rail core bed, but it is made by 713 maker and it's a mag bed. So I can put a flex plate on it. It has magnets embedded into the aluminum. So it's not like the aftermarket ones where you put the magnets on the top surface and then you put the bed on the magnets. It's actually the, the magnets are in the aluminum plate. So you get the flatness of the Mike six plate. Um, and flex plates go on it. Aluminium. Yes, Greg. Um, and I do have an addition to the flex plate that 713 cut for me. 
I also have a Gecko Tech flex plate, and that works great on it too. So it's just their flex plate right on the, the aluminum of, of the rail core. So this one is straight from Gecko Tech. You can, you can specify a size. So I made it uh, my XY size and, and 10 millimeters more. So I have a nice lip to grab on the front, but Gecko Tech makes that uh, flex steel. And then this one is from 713 Maker. Uh, he cut it and he's debating if he's gonna do these or not. He's still trying to decide if it's worth it for him to um, make uh, the flex plates or if it's easier for people to just grab them from, from some place like Gecko Tech. Um, there's a couple others that sell custom size spring steel flex plates. Um, but the bed is the rail core ZL aluminum bed with the, the slots for mounting and everything with the magnets built right in. Um, and since you mentioned glass, you, you can, I don't shatter it here. You can drop Boro right on top too. So I have the option to do glass on top of mine as well. It's fun to be able to play with different surfaces, but it's not flexible glass, it's just glass. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, I'm mounting that stepper. Also, I did order one of the new uh, new nozzles today, Greg. Those look pretty cool. Also had to order a new fan because I dropped a uh, a BL Touch into my fan last night, and apparently the E3D fans don't withstand a BL Touch going inside of them very well. Several blades fell off. And it was quite quite fun. I have not tried printing Peak yet. I need to man up and, and give it a shot. I lost my, my three millimeter there, there. Need more washers. Yeah, the, the fan accident was quite exciting. Nice quiet. I was doing test probes. The fan shouldn't have even been running, but I had an always on port and it exploded. Yeah, that is, it, it really blew up. I think it lost three blades or so. All right, so there's the steppers back on. I'm going to pull the, uh, the idler mounts here off of, I had them in my HDP test halo. Uh, I have another 24 volt fan here now, so I just ordered a replacement from Phyllis Struger. I think it has, let me, let me see here. It looks like it has two blades left, maybe three. There's less fan there than, than not at this point. No, this is the hot end 
uh, heat sink fan, not the not the layer fan. And it also makes a heck of a racket when it's uh, running without all the blades there. Okay. So one thing people seem to get confused easily on which uh, which way to build their idler stacks on these outside idlers. Um, as far as the the spacer or the uh, the tooth tooth idler, um, it's pretty straightforward. On the short stack that's the outside one, it's obviously a tooth idler because the belt's going to go around it. On the inside stack, spacer is always on bottom. We wouldn't have made it double high if if the spacer was on top. So the front one goes this way, and the back one you just reverse them so the taller stack is on the outside. Okay, let's see here. I need some shims or some washers. I can pull them off of these. Yeah. There's a lot of M3 hardware on the floor in here. Yeah, that belt got pretty chewed up. Cracks. Greg there is from E3D, and I've been bugging him about uh, the the gates, belts, and pulleys already. So hopefully they'll have that very soon. That's the number one thing I'm I'm really waiting on at this point is to to try the gates, pulleys. I'm so tired of these cheap ones. Um, but my experiment here that's ending right now with these smooth idlers, I don't think was really an improvement. I have giant fingers, and I'm going to lose a dozen shims here if I'm not careful. Yeah, same here, Ken. Speaking of, that one's kind of rough. Try a different one. better. So what I'm doing now is just stacking as many um, shims as I can on the outside of this because I know for these uh, these idlers you want them as low as possible. Is that right? No, that's the opposite. We want these as low as possible, these as high as possible. Oh, building that backwards. Which does make them easier to build. So one shim above, one shim below. M5 washers. And it looks like one more shim. <laughs> My count's a little different than everybody else's because not only are these slightly different uh, pulleys, but um, 
I also am using 12 millimeter shoulder bolts instead of 10s. No reason other than I have them. It might actually make this a little too high. I can adjust that later. Okay, so this is the outside one. Careful not to cross thread it. Yeah, I need to chase something through that first. Ah. <sighs> Just running a shoulder bolt into it to get the threads cleared out. That one's good. Now, I gotta go back to do I wanna use 10s or 12s? Keep the 12, but I'm gonna add a little bit of a shim above. I'm gonna have a problem. I really don't mix well with these shims, they're just tiny. Okay, I know I have 12 millimeters here. Those are all the same. Oh, I have calipers right here. Let's check. Yeah, that's a 12 mil millimeter shoulder bolt. So I think I need to take one millimeter out with a washer, put one shim above. Preferably a 
pulley that doesn't feel like there's sand inside of it. Shim below. This must be terribly exciting. See you, Greg. Thanks for uh, joining for a while. That is indeed a Rostock Max V2, um, which I call the No Stock Max because I changed enough on it that they asked me to stop referring to it as a Rostock Max. I think it was jokingly, but it was a fair enough point that I went ahead and, uh, and yeah, it actually has a name plate on it um, that I printed on it. See if we can get this on camera here. There you go. The no stock max. So I renamed it to that when I had a piezo, a 713 maker mount. I had, um, oh geez, it, the only stock parts on it at the point, the, the duet was in it. Um, different arms. Uh, there was very little stock left other than the frame and the bed. Um, and uh, let's see, it was John Ollie at the time and uh, JJ um, joked that I should stop calling it a row stock, so I called it the no stock. So I'm Totally blind guessing on my shim spacing here. Hopefully it's close. Try and eliminate as much play as possible on idler stacks and I just eyeball it and stack the shims up as close as I can get them to the bottom of the, uh, the shoulder and call it good. And then, as I said earlier, I just take a dab of uh, grease. Doesn't take much. Um, Put it right on the bottom of the, the bottom shim. And that usually will let me thread it on to the, uh, printer without, as long as I hold up on the, uh, the pulley without the shim falling off. The there we go. Hey, look at that. Very little play, spin smoothly. That's one. Okay, so on this, I happen to know. So this is my 20 millimeter. I know I want one shim above. I want a tooth idler. That one feels pretty good. One shim. Oh, that's fine. That idler pulled a shim with it, so. Need another shim in between because there's what happens, the reason the reason I can't be consistent on the number of shims, there's actually two bearings to each of these pulleys, and the bearings can get pressed in too far, um, meaning your shim height will change from one, one printer to another. You might need more shims. You might need less shims than I need um, based on how square those pulleys are to the outside edge. Or the, I'm sorry, the... Uh, bearings are to the outside edge of the pulley. And I need 
one more shim here. So someone was talking about upgrades we have coming. Um, I'll answer that in a second, Dottis. Uh, so hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, Steve, J. Steve White, um, has the parts coming to convert his rail core to 250 to a uh, rail core to ZL. Um, so he'll join us there. And once he has that, he also has the parts to put a full top enclosure on his. So where I'm going with a halo, uh, he's enclosing his, um, which should be great for things like printing peak that Greg was talking about, nylon, that kind of stuff. Um, he has doors on it already, and then he's doing a full enclosure. So that upgrade is in the works once he's tested that and got a feel for how that works for him. Uh, we'll, we'll look at uh, making that work for the, uh, the 300. Cool. There's another one done. A little bit of play, not too much. I'm going to let it go. Okay, so the 300 by 300. Um, the bed has a couple things about going bigger. First of all, uh, when you get much over 300 by 300, quarter inch mic six starts to sag in the middle. So you go to three eighths mic six, it, the cost skyrockets. I mean, really skyrockets. Um, you just start adding headaches to, to the bed. Uh, that can be solved, um, but that's, that's concern one. So a 500 by 500 bed will actually sag two tenths of a millimeter in the center out of quarter inch mic six. That's a full layer height. Um, you can solve that. But then uh, your next challenge is, first of all, the Y rail will deflect about the same amount, about two tenths of a millimeter, um, if, if you extend it far enough to go for a, a 500 millimeter printable span. So that's part two. Um, the next problem you would run into then is um, the belts, the belt path being longer, you can get more of a, a vibration and it, it takes a lot of belt tension when you go that big. So you want bigger belts, you want the nine millimeter, they take more tension and your shoulder bolts are gonna hold a lot of tension at them um, and probably past what a five millimeter shoulder bolt's rated at. So to scale it bigger is not a trivial, oh, just make it bigger. Um, you have to one by one solve each of those problems to do it right. Um, Probably the, the easiest way to solve those is to go to um, moving your XY up and down and leaving your bed static on the bottom is one option. Let's see what I did here. Looks like I did. A couple of shots above. Gonna find all my shims. I just dumped them on my desk here. Um, so, like I was saying, it's it's solvable. It just we don't want to just throw uh, a bigger bed on it and, and call it a day. We want to do it right. Um, yeah, you could do trusses. Um, you can do 1515 along the edges of the bed and make uh, a carrier just out of 1515 along the edges of the bed. And the math says that that is enough to uh, remove that deflection. Um, so it's, it's not that it can't be solved. It's simply that the current design needs changes in order to scale. Um, we have begun 
kicking around the, the thought of Railcore 3 and what it'll look like. Um, Railcore 2 will probably stay as it is. 3 uh, will probably be able to scale larger. Um, but that's not a guarantee yet. We're still still kicking that back and forth some. Uh, but yeah, the the main thing is if we're going to do that, we want to do it and know that we're we're not setting people up to have bad prints because something's sagging or isn't supported right or um, you know the belts aren't really up to that that range of motion um, i know others do do those scales um, but i think in a, a lot of cases they're doing it without having really engineered the problem of the bigger size they just made it bigger In fact, I know some people have started working on the Railcore 2 design, just making it bigger and ignoring our, uh, we don't think that'll work. And I have gotten some messages with questions around those bigger beds for the Railcore 2 um, that... Uh, indicate they've they found the things that we said hey you're going to have a problem here here and here uh they're having those problems and and i think they're kind of waffling and giving up on the project which is unfortunate my grease trick didn't work that whole stack just fell Need a little more grease on this one. The stack is just falling off. Yeah, just scale it up. It'll work. That's the worst that can happen, right, Kim? And for anybody hearing the, the rail core three and thinking, oh, I'm going to wait and, and not build, um, it's nowhere near even a prototype part at this point. Um, we have not finalized any design plans. We haven't uh, come up with anything solid that, uh, that would even lead to a prototype. So um, it's a long way off. So let's see here if I have this right. Should be able to string up a belt now. Go around that, around. Okay. Now, there's one belt. That looks halfway decent. It's not perfect. Um, this pulley definitely needs to come up. Other than that, it doesn't look bad at all. Cool. At least it's not totally wrong. All right. So on the taller one, 
I just did some shims, so I gotta pull one of these apart again. I'm dropping hardware all over the place. I don't know if you, you can pick it up in the stream, but every 30 seconds or so, I'm knocking something on the floor. Always spin your tooth idlers before you uh, call them good because you can usually feel once you put them on a shoulder bolt um, if there's a bad bearing inside of there. Yeah, this one has a totally different shim stack than uh, the other rear one. Or other tall one. And that just goes back to the spacing of those bearings and the idlers. I'm trying to think what else we have in the works for the rail core. We talked about the mag bed. Obviously, the Halo. Um, Halo, I gotta be honest, I don't expect um, that it's gonna make a huge improvement in print quality. I don't expect it'll probably make any. Um, but I wanted to do it anyway, and that sure looks cool. We have the enclosure coming, um, top and doors, details to be announced. There we go. So that's all the idler stacks done. All the rail core kits are 24 volt. And we recommend 24 volt for the do-it-yourself version as well. Um, the only major difference between the do-it-yourself kit and, and the Project Red kit is in the do-it-yourself, at least the default is to use TR84, so four millimeter uh, lead, uh, lead screws, and 0.9 steppers on Z. They use TR82s, so two millimeter per revolution in, in Z. Um, and 1.8 degree steppers comes out to the same step per millimeter though. So it's really no change. Other than that, it's, it's all, um, it is a 120 volt DC, uh, AC bed. And the kit. Okay. Now I got to do, oh crap. Let me string these, these up as is and just see how this fits. I may have to swap out my uh, belt retaining clips because I did use different sized ones for those. Um, uh, I lost 
lost track of my thought. Um, for the flanged idlers I had, uh, flanged bearings, um, if I have to swap those out, it's going to be a pain because I have the aluminum white plate on, which is another upgrade we're working on. Not ready yet. Um, but I need to do some work because that, that white plate's really a pain in the butt right now. Loosen these up a bit and I can put just a little tension on and see how this all fits together. Oh yeah, I love the aluminum groove mount. That's awesome. Um, such a nice upgrade from the, the printed one. Um, if nothing else, just because it makes it super easy to take the hot end off, um, which I do on a very regular basis. So like I pointed out earlier, this pulley is low. Adjust it height wise. And this pulley is also low. So the big test of this, and I'm gonna pick up the camera so I don't get motion sick on me, um, but the big test is to see, I don't know if you can see it in the video, how parallel these belt runs are um, off of this pulley to this point and this pulley to this point on, on both sides. Um, and I can tell you from just looking at this front one here, it is pretty much dead on. Um, I have a square and I can check it versus the side of the halo. That is really awkward to do. Let's do this. There we go. Bolts in the way. That is dead on square, which is really good news, because that's the measurement that I was most worried about with with these is um, how square. I mean, that is right on the money. Um, whew. If that had been off, I would have had to buy a new one uh, and start over. So that's awesome. Um, those line up. That That's just a dead straight line across. Um, honestly, they line up probably better than I had gotten my... Uh, oh, sorry. Was I blocking the view? Let me turn this a little bit. This might help. Trying to get it centered nicely um everything's mirrored in my my view so i don't know if you can see but but this is is dead 90 degrees off of this they're totally parallel runs to the the halo itself um it matches up really well uh yeah so all i was doing is just a quick test um I'm putting the square up against the edge of the halo, which I haven't fully, you know, 100% squared to the bed, but it's it's within a degree or so. Um, and I'm just pushing it up against the belt. And it's 
it's right on. I mean, I don't have the belt fully tensioned, so there's some movement still. This is, you know, a quick early test, but it's it's really close, which it should be. I mean, the math was there. Um, I just used the belt thickness off of the back to half the teeth on, on the pulley. Um, and then same here, belt teeth on against this pulley to belt teeth on this pulley. So these two are in alignment um, exactly. And then this one was the tricky one to get the, the stepper spacing right. Um, required just kind of some funky math because I had to discount the belt teeth and measure off of the teeth of the pulley. It, it was kind of weird. Um, but it lines up, so that's awesome. Um, honestly, I don't really have to change. Uh, I'd say the halo is good. It's it's right flush with all of the, uh, the extrusion. There's nothing sticking out anywhere. Um, I may loosen those up and use some uh, clamps to get that exact. Um, but it's it's close enough for an eyeball test. So that's that's awesome. Um, what is uh, let's see. Just checking here. Uh, honestly, my belts are parallel enough. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for here is if these two belt runs are, are parallel or if they are wider or narrower um, because I had thought I had changed those um, those belt clips. But what I think I did, you know what I did. So when I put in the Y plate uh, about a week, two weeks ago now, um, I put in the stock belt clips because I got the Y plate at the same time I got the halo and I was planning on putting in, in the halo. So I'd put in the stock clips at that point. That's why it's, it's measuring up. Um, and I had noticed lately that my, these two belts were not parallel um, with the flanged bearings and it's because I had swapped those already. So that's cool. That's one thing I don't have to do today. Uh, so I need to mount some of this hardware on here. And I will be done. This is obviously too short. I probably need a 16 millimeter M3 bolt for that. like a good fit. So this is just my my guide tube. That works. These are going to be a tricky one. I may have to modify the design of the uh, this part, we'll see what we can do. I don't think a 12 is going to reach. For the cable clip. It does not. And I'm sure 16 will bottom out. So I'll have to, uh, I'll have to make the cable clip a bit thicker. Um, so a 16 will work. I don't have 14s. Yeah, and a 16 even with a washer isn't gonna. There's there's a pretty good gap there, so that's not gonna work. Um, I know my X and stop isn't gonna work. Um, Wow, that barely clears the belt. Actually, will that work? That looks like it'll work fine. So I can install that. 
And that's probably 16 plus a washer. Anybody have any other questions on the rail core, squaring it up, the halo? It's looking pretty good. I'm going to bolt it down a little bit more. Hopefully this tightens down. is a little too long for this, so I may need to make it, well, I can't make it thicker. Hmm. I may have to stack some washers. Um, so our current thought is to do something where rail core two stuck around. Um, rail core three would be an alternative, not a replacement. Um, so the the problem with a lot of our design ideas for rail core three are they're they're probably going to be pretty cost prohibitive um that's one of those things where we're just going to make a, a crazy printer um that does all the bells and whistles that people seem to want um and i i have a feeling when people see what those bells and whistles really cost when done right they're not going to want to buy it um, or most people won't. So it's not it's not going to be a complete replacement for the rail core two for that reason. Um, but that's my early guess. Uh, we haven't obviously priced anything out because we haven't built anything. Uh, we haven't even modeled anything um, other than some some very rough just idea modeling, not even prototype modeling. And this is a pain. So I don't think it'll be so much an upgrade from Rail Core 2 to Rail Core 3 because I don't think there will be a lot of similarity um, where you would you would upgrade from one to the other. Hopefully I'm explaining that right. And it, you know, that could change. Um, certainly uh, I think most of the parts we do use, if there's a 300 by 300 rail core three um, would carry over, but we'll probably end up doing things like looking at ball screws instead of lead screws. There we go. Um, which would obviously mean, you know, the entire Z axis wouldn't carry over. Um, things like that. But it's hard to say. We haven't we haven't gotten there yet. We may have some rough something to show at Murph would be the earliest I would expect to see even a, a single prototype part. Um, that was the wrong size bolt. I gotta get one more M3 nut popped over.
better when you give it if you are. Okay, and then I can loosen that up now and just slide this over just a little bit. All I'm trying to do is get it just shy of where I'll run into the uh, the Z yokes. <clears throat> it might need to be adjusted a little bit. I might tap them. I don't know the answer to that. We haven't even gotten that far. Um, I can say we've started looking at it uh, with using 2020. Um, just so that we're sure it can scale big enough. I can say that whatever we do will have the 3Z uh, lead screw set up. It will have the uh, side panels built in to the, the frame as a structural component. Um, it, I would guess will be 2020 based. Um, we don't have a printable dimension planned yet. Um, we'll solve that as an engineering problem, not as a not as a uh, you know this is how big we're gonna print for volume. We'll we'll figure out based on the design criteria we come up with what kind of volume it'll support, and we'll we'll make it scale to that. So hopefully that answers most of that question. Just adding some nuts here or bolts here to some of these nuts to help brace the uh, halo against the frame. This thing looks cool. I don't know what you guys think. I think it looks awesome. As always, 713 Makers machining is just perfect. Um, Honestly, so the rail core started as um, Steve White had designed rail core one already, um, and he was printing with it, and he was pretty happy with it. Um, it's a similar concept, similar design. Um, I wanted to build a core XY after having a Delta for a while. Um, I wanted to branch out and build something different. So my plan had been a D-Bot. Um, when I went to Murph and looked at the D-Bot in person, it didn't meet a couple of the criteria I had in mind. I was going to build a D-Bot and put linear rails on it. Um, so I talked to Steve, and we, we kind of combined our ideas. I wanted a uh, linear rail-based Core XY. Um, he had a Core XY that was linear rail-based, um, and he had already done the 1515 and he had some pegboard side panels on it and it was printing great. So we knew it was a good design to start with. Um, and what I did is I brought the ideas to help make it look nice and, and um, be the printer I wanted it to be. And what I love the most about uh, the project is it is the printer I want. I mean, if, if I turn and, and show you, here's, 
here are my prints. Um, most of these were done on the rail core. Not all, like this was this was a, a no stock max print, but the majority of those prints were done on the rail core. Um, I don't do repeat prints other than when, like this was to dial in Cura and do some slicer tests and compare slicers. I did, you know, four of these. Um, I print a lot of these cubes. I print one for every filament I have. Um, I print a lot of these little pyramids because they're quick and cool and fun to give away. But what I ended up with is a printer that is what I wanted in a printer. It's reliable and it prints beautifully. Um, I can crank out, uh, I would have no, no hesitation to print something like this. I mean, look how intricate that is. That, that was done with a steel nozzle. It's glow in the dark filament, atomic filament. I would have no hesitation to put that on my printer right now, let it crank and know I'm going to get that, that kind of quality out of it. Um, here's another one of those, those keys are cool prints. Um, they're fun for Halloween. Um, you know, it, it can do this. I mean, show me an FDM that's going to do these little spirals and it does it every time. You know, it's, it's just been so consistent. That's the most fun of it is it's the printer I want and I like to tinker. Um, things like the halo, you can see, I, I bolted it on. It's been a little over an hour now, hour and a half. Um, I can, I can come up with a new design, put it on the printer and have it working and, and test it out and know, you know, it's, it's going to work. Um, and it's so easy to tinker on and change things on. Um, the other thing that's been, yeah, the, the little scrolls on those keys are just insane. Um, and the, the other thing I love about this project, and this is the project as a whole, is the community we've built, um, between me and, and J. Steve White, um, you know, we started and it was just us two in the, the Rep Rap IRC, and we have a great group of guys that's in the IRC every day throwing ideas around and just chatting, um, coming up with new ideas and new things to try and new ways to push them, um, the Facebook group, and then working with 713 Maker, uh, with Wade at Mandala and, and with Project Red now. Um, you know, I can, <laughs> I can throw an idea to Wade or Matt and say, hey, will you make this out of aluminum? And they fight over who gets to make the aluminum part for me. Um, that, that's just a crazy cool place to be at with this printer at this point. Um, and we, we just have this cool community going where we can bounce ideas around and, and build new parts and new printers. And it's, it's the printer I want it to be. And a lot of that's because of the community. So that's, that's the best part about it to me. Um, and then how easy it is to tinker. So I'm going to, I, I have this raft around here. I'm going to move this camera a little bit here, but I'll show you this. So I have this aluminum Y plate on right now. Sorry to make you all dizzy there. Um, I have aluminum Y plate on. I have the brand new aluminum hot end mount on from Mandala. I put a different uh, hot end on recently from Project Red, put in the titanium heat break, uh, pick that up. I have a test Y carriage mount. Um, it's so easy to bolt prototype parts on this that I'm, you know, I can change all of that out in, you know, an hour or two. It's that to me is awesome. You buy somebody else's, you know, ready-made printer. Take the CME CNC Artemis. Love CME CNC as a company. Um, I know Steve personally, the owner. Awesome guy. Like like stopping in and talking to him. If you want a Delta, the, the Artemis is the Delta to get. Um, but if you buy an Artemis, you get an Artemis and you have an Artemis. And yes, there are some upgrades. You just did carbon fiber arms for it and some other things. But for the most part, that printer is done. Um, you can't bolt on new parts without really ripping it apart. Um, if you want to plug and play Delta printer, it's perfect. It's it's the best delta out there right now and it's great for plug and plug and play.
more or less plug and play. You've got to tinker with it and adjust it and the rails need adjustment, but you can customize it and make it the printer you want it to be very easily. Um, someone just did one and they, they made it 55 millimeters taller. They got custom size side panels, made it 55 millimeters taller and they're mounting a uh, Titan underneath, Titan Arrow, I think, underneath the, uh, I don't think it's a water-cooled one, underneath the Y-Rail. I didn't want to give up the Z-Space, so I haven't found a way to do it, but they, they came up with their mount, and it's on, on Twitter at this point, and they're going to put it on Thingiverse here soon. Um, they did it themselves. I said, you know, I can't make a, an Arrow work on there. They did it, so... Yeah, uh, Ken just, just built one and he flipped the whole top end 180 degrees um, and prepped for the tool changer. Um, it's just super easy to customize and work on. Okay, so I got to tension my belts and I think I'm done. Let's see. Oh, I hit my end stop switch, so that's good. Okay, where are... I can't tension the belts the way I normally do because my desk drawer won't open for some reason. And my one, two, three blocks are inside of it. Something funky going on with that desk drawer, huh? Well, that may be where I leave it for the stream then. Um, I can manually tension it and, and home do a rough. So when I tension, I just get this front belt kind of loose like this. And when you tension the back belt, it will add tension to the front one. And I would normally tension it by, by squaring I don't tension by tuning it to a specific frequency or any of that. I know that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I just tension it until the, the rail is square and it feels right to me. Um, something about there. There we go. I think the halo's on. I don't have a hot end fan working. I gotta swap that still. Oops. I'll plug in my panel do here. I do quick disconnects on all my cables so I can just plug them in. Need to reprint this mount. Kind of killed it. Is it just me or did that sound pretty quiet? That seemed a little quieter than normal. That's definitely quieter. That's pretty funny. I did not expect that. Yeah, I think it does. It'll also act as a gigantic heat sink for these steppers. Yeah, that is drastically quieter. That's hilarious. That alone might be a reason to get another one of these for my second one. Jeez. So 
the other thing about the um, the rail core, there's only one other printer I know of, and it's the Voron 2 uh, that does the three-point leveling. Um, I think we're the only ones as a kit, unless they're shipping Voron 2 kits yet. Um, if you've not used that, I just leveled the bed. It physically levels it for me um, in plane to the motion of the printer, uh, the motion of the hot end. And once you've used that, you'll never give it up. It's it's hard <laughs> hard to explain how nice that feature is. Um, I will never own a printer that that uh, doesn't have that at this point, unless it's something like a Delta that. You know, you, you level differently. Um, Matt has not announced Halo pricing. The big problem with pricing for the Halo is actually, well, first of all, it's obviously a huge piece of metal. Um, he can get a lot of parts out of the inside, but it's a, you know, it's a giant chunk of aluminum, which means he has to buy bigger stock to make them. Uh, he had to special order the stock for this. It's a bit bigger than he normally has in the shop. The 300 is another 55 millimeters bigger. Uh, in each dimension. Um, exactly, Ken. It, it just changes your printing. <laughs> um, so what I was saying, the, the 300 is bigger. Not only does that mean a big, big chunk of aluminum to make them and a lot of machining time, um, it's bigger than any of U USPS's standard packaging or their standard packaging or pricing. Um, to get that in a box with enough, you know, padding around the sides that it's it's going to survive shipping. Um, the shipping costs for the Halo are really troubling him. Um, I told him, you know, just price it where you can. People will buy it if they want it. Um, that squared up really nicely on its own. Now that the belts are tensioned. It is dead on straight down those those paths. I'm going to move the camera here and show you. Um, we look straight down that, that belt path. So I'm looking straight down this to this this top belt in the back. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it is just dead on. Um, it's very nice. Yeah, I just finished up. Um, I'm actually going to swap in a hot end fan. Oh, my hot end fans are locked in the drawer. I can't open. you got to be kidding me. Let's see if I can find a way to open this drawer. Not sure what's going on here. But, yeah, sorry, dude. You did miss pretty much the entire stream there. Seriously, what is up with these cars? It's like the drawer fell off of its track inside of the desk. Hey, Steve. Um, got the halo installed, put three bolts per side, got the belts lined up. Um, just showing people the, the belt alignment is just dead on square. Um, it's, it's really pretty. Uh, came out nice. Um, had to raise my, my pulleys a tad bit. Um, other than that, it, it bolted on pretty clean. Um, yeah, that looks good. Uh, if I could open up my desk drawer and get a different hot end fan, I would be able to print um, a couple things like my um, cable clip is too thin, so a 16 millimeter bolt won't tighten down on it. Um, should probably put some washers in there and just get it held down somewhat now
had to stack some washers on the uh, the X carriage, but other or X um, end stop mount. But other than that, it it mounted up fine. Really, it went on pretty well. Yeah, I got a. My wife knows some trick to get that desk drawer open. I'm gonna ask her. Be right back. Both the top and bottom one are stuck. Yep. Oh wait. First. Yeah, I know. It's it's weird how they it's like the top drawer fell off the track or something. And start running with a really big hammer. Um That's yeah, that's Mrs. Railcore. <laughs> Got the important one. I think that's good for now. We can. No, you have to pick it up. Oh, you mean that's yeah. all you need? Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So she got one drawer open. I will be careful not to shut it. Now I just need a screwdriver here. So I can take the fan off of this and transfer it over. There we go. Actually, I need to swap them. I have quick disconnects on everything. So there's the fan I destroyed. Here's a new fan. So Steve, I think you missed it, but um, the biggest thing about the halo so far, other than the nice belt alignment and how cool it looks, is, um, oh, hey, I can tension my belts right now. Um, my printer's quieter. My printer's a lot quieter. Uh, the Duet filament sensor, I would give a solid C on an American education grading scale. Um, I'm not terribly impressed, um, mostly because it's wildly inaccurate depending on what filament you run through it. Um, the worst I've seen is the Atomic Marble PLA. Uh, my accuracy range varied between 10 and 130% um, of the expected motion to the actual motion. Um, through this print, which was 22 hours. So through that print, it 
sometimes reported only 5% moved of what was expected, and other times it said 130% move out of what was expected. And that varied pretty constantly throughout the print. Wasn't based on speed, wasn't based on anything other than random randomness. Um, which means when you configure it, you say if the expected percent drops below this, stop printing and assume I have a jam. But how can you do that when it's up to, you know, a hundred and some percent uh, to de determine when, when you have a jam? Um, you can set it so that if it says, you know, if it goes under 5% stop, um, but the further, the, the less refined your setting is, the uh, the less responsive it's going to be on, on jam detection. So it might take two millimeters of motion, uh, you know, required before it decides, nope, it's not printing anymore. Um, which depending on your print, two millimeters of, of filament can be a, a you know, full layer. Uh, I gotta plug this fan back in. There we go, we have a working fan now. So I'm gonna tension my belts, which I do very similar to how um, Wade showed uh, he does. So pull that forward. I use these Irwin bar clamps. No, the fan is not quite. The, the halo did not make the fan quieter. And I just bar clamp this to the side here. And my X carriages are the same length uh, on the back side of them. So I can push it up against my X carriage there and then take a bar clamp for the other side. this here. So I have those pressed tight up against the sides. And now when I pull it up against there, this side is not fully against the bar clamp. This side is this this front edge. Here I'll move the camera here. So I have a book I have a one, two, three block right here. I've clamped it against, so it's flush up against this side and it's against this linear rail. And you can see my X carriage is fully seated against it here. So I just push my Y against it. On the other side, there is a gap. It's hard to get in frame. There's a gap right here of about an eighth of an inch um, between the one, two, three block and the X carriage. So, yeah, it's a lousy webcam that's not really positionable. So what I can do is just loosen these bolts up. And I just I think doing it. One of those is not loose. That one. And now I've pulled that that belt so that this carriage is up against that one, two, three block.
All right, just tighten those back down. I have those bar clamps from woodworking and um, so now looking down at it, you can see that's much better. So it's, it's nice and against both of them now. And then just push it away. Make sure to hold the one, two, three block before you release the clamp. Not much quieter, I guess, but I think I think the XY motion is a little bit quieter. That fan is definitely the loudest part. Yeah, John, I should probably put that on the wiki. I'm thinking maybe I. Well, we've talked about doing um, uh, some videos with Project Red uh, for for setup and configuration and such. Um, so maybe we'll put it in one of those. So I think I am done at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and do some leveling and then next thing is to, to do a test print to see how it prints. I don't expect any significant change in print quality. Um, much as I would like to say, it's gonna make a huge difference. I don't think it will. Yeah, so what, what Joe has talked about is having me over to his shop sometime, and I will build a full kit. Um, we'll probably both video record it and live stream it. Um, so we'll have a nice production quality video of a kit build. Um, and then we'll go through the tuning and, and you know first moves type stuff. Uh, and do individual videos for each of those. So we end up with a nice you know, end result based on the kit. Trying to get my panel do reattached here. I beat this case up so badly. I need to reprint one and I just haven't gotten around to it. I printed it before Murph. Uh, as soon as I got it attached, I accidentally bumped into it and broke off the attachment piece. Super glued that back on, took it to Murph, carried it home from Murph. Coming in through the door, I ripped the whole case off and ripped the back off and stuff, and I super glued it back together again. So it's had a rough life. Part of the problem is I'm just not terribly happy with the design. I want to fix it up, so I haven't, haven't reprinted it yet. That'll do for now. So...
Let me block off the side here. Electronics enclosure. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else to, to go over here. A little bit of time. I'm warming up the bed and the hot end now. Anybody else have any other questions before we call it? We get a prank going before the video ends, just a cube or something. Big bulb head in the shop, just bolting on the electronics cover. All right, should be ready to print. Let's see here. Don't see any reason my bed level would have changed, so that should be fine. Um, 
fifteen percent infill, I think. Something like that. A little twenty millimeter tube. Okay, putting that on the bed now we're gonna need to get a better webcam if I'm gonna do this kind of thing. I think I'm done. Um, it's printing. Uh, I'll post a picture or something of the, the print. I don't expect it's going to look any different than any other tube that's ever printed, but maybe it'll surprise me. Um, yeah, cool. Halo works. It fits nice. Uh, next steps for the Halo are um, I actually have the 300 modeled already. Uh, I'll send that off to Matt and, and tell him that it's ready to go. Um, and then it's up to him to uh, to get the material in, mill it, figure out pricing and shipping and all of that stuff. Yeah, this is a little Logitech. I forget the model. It's something like that. Yeah, John, so... As with every other part, the pricing and availability is totally up to him. Um, I, I do the design and pass it off, and he takes care of the milling and the selling of it, so that will all be up to Matt. Um, like I said, I don't expect any big changes from him. Uh, the one change I, I will make before I ship it off, I'm going to put four holes I talked about this at the beginning of the stream uh, in the corners directly over the top of the extrusions so that you can get to each of the uh, the bolts for those extrusions. Um, and the side panels are getting the same access ports to all the corners. Um, so you can actually take any you know, anything off um, after it's built or, or make adjustments. Um, so I'll make that change before I, I give the go ahead to map. I have a GoPro mount that I think would be ideal uh, that I 3D printed and it's it's adjustable and everything. Um, and it has a Raspberry Pi camera on it. Um, the plan is to put it on here. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to rebuilding the, the Pi for just doing cam for the, the rail port. Yep, it, it looks pretty much like every other cube I've printed. So no no major changes, good or bad, um, which is what I expected. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna call it good on the stream at this point and um, get back to doing some things here around the house. But thanks everybody for joining and chatting while I swapped in the halo. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>